but my only problem now is unfortunately logic games which is like why i'm just i'm just like slowing down on it i can't seem to i can't seem to move forward um but yeah so i've been like doing the lsat for like i've been doing like piecemeal studying at this point for like two years now so now i'm actually sitting down and doing it but it's just like i'm just I just, it's like the bane of my existence when it comes to logical reasoning. Like I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> like I just don't want to do it. So I just need a little bit of help there. Yeah, sure. Of course. Any particular areas where I could support you in that? Um, necessary assumption, inferences. Um, I've been, I'm like a mad woman, <laughs> like when it comes to, um, inferences like I've been like writing down like all my like entire thought process like you could I could show you like my entire like spreadsheet of everything I've been doing um it's it's a little crazy <laughs> it's a little crazy <laughs> um but yeah I've been I've been reading a lot of your um blog posts which has helped a lot um with that like you know just like really like mapping everything out and like really breaking everything down so I really like honed in on that which is what I wasn't doing before so yeah, so I'm, I'm getting a little bit better. I've, I've had a, a little bit of an improvement with inferences and necessary assumption, but it's something that obviously I need to keep working on. Sure, sure. Have you watched any of the inference workshops or necessary assumption workshops? Yeah, like a hundred, like two or three times at least. Like I, I'll just like constantly rewatching them. Like maybe I didn't catch something the first time, so I'll rewatch it over and over again. So that's like where I'm like really stuck right now for now. Sure, sure. Understood. Well, yeah. I mean, all my general advice that I can give you is in the course already. If you have particular mm -hmm. questions, I'm happy to address them. I just uploaded the latest inference workshop inside the course like a couple days ago. So you may not have seen that one in particular. I've, you know, I've been doing these full length live classes to supplement mm -hmm. some of the older videos I made before the world of Zoom. And so I'm going more in depth with a reboot of all the conceptual theoretical approaches for strategy. And then of course, in class, we're going over several questions of each type as examples. Right, right, right. That's very, very helpful. Like, um, I've, I've sat through, I think, two of your, like, your online classes, yeah. of, like, your webinars, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, that's been helpful. I, I think I did the inference one. If I, I think I may have done that one. So, that was, that was helpful. So, I'm really just focusing on that. And I'm just, like, I'm just really slowing down. It's, like, something, like, I just, I can't think, like, whenever I do inferences. I, I, I don't know if a lot of your other students have that issue, but I, I just don't know. Like, I just, I don't know what to do. Like, I just, I lose it. Yeah, I hear you. Well, I mean, people have trouble <laughs> with all question types. You're definitely not alone there. The thing is to engage in that in-depth review process to figure out where exactly your misunderstanding is coming from. So if you're the kind of person who, as you said, you're making spreadsheets, categorizations, analysis, that's all fantastic. That's great. Aside from numerical data, though, there's also uh -huh. the qualitative data in terms of what your approach was like, where you might've slipped up here or there, missing a key word in mm -hmm. stimulus, question stem or choices, the tempting mm -hmm. wrong answers, discouraging right answers, looking into all of that. Right, I think, I think that's what it is. Maybe like, I'm just, I just, I just look over a, like a specific word. Like, I don't know why I do this. Like, I'll see the word generally. And I, this is, I know generally is never the answer choice to choose. <laughs> and guess what? I, Choose that answer choice. I don't know what happens. I trip up and I choose a generally choice because it's so attractive. Like I, I just choose it because I see myself spending way too much time, right? Like I'll spend like easily, easily, like like easily 30 minutes on one question just trying to like analyze it. I mean, I don't know, maybe that might sound a little ridiculous spending 30 minutes on a question, but no, my reading comp deep dives, we spend an entire hour just discussing the passage, not even the oh, questions. Okay. So okay. I'm all about taking more time. I do want to disagree with you on one particular thing you said, though, which is generally never being the right answer. I don't believe in those blanket statements. I'm sure if we look through the 10,000 LSAT problems out there, the the 5,000 on uh, logical reasoning, we may find mm -hmm. an example where generally was the correct answer or in reading comp it was. So I would recommend against such a, a extreme approach or a formulaic approach to dismiss certain choices or automatically choose them based on individual particular words. Everything is contextual. Everything's contextual. I'll keep that in mind. I will definitely keep that in mind for sure. Um, but one yeah. thing I do want to point out for you though, is that if you're looking at approaches, some general frameworks you can use that apply to both inference and necessary assumption would actually be to be biased in favor of more moderate choices. Okay. More moderate 
rather than more extreme because more moderate is more likely to have been supported by or required by the stimulus than more extreme language would be. So that right. is a general thing you can you can use going in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause like, I would say like, it's kind of like following underneath like the spectrum, right? Like this is spectrum here and like moderate language would fall under it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. moderate okay. language in a way is smaller. So it's more likely to fit within the umbrella of the stimulus. Whereas more extreme language is making a broader claim. It's going to go beyond oftentimes what is contained within the stimulus. So okay. in general, if you were totally at a loss down between two, go towards the more moderate language on average and have that mindset going in. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.